Yes, thank you very much. Yes, I, I'm John Mitchell. I'm the director of ALNAP. Um, I haven't got very long, three minutes. Uh, <laughs> I'll try and uh, stick to that. And what I'd like to do is to share with you uh, some of the key highlights of the work that ALNAP's been doing on operational leadership. So what do we mean by leadership? Um, what does good leadership look like? Well, our work in ALNAP suggests that the analysis of uh, in, uh, leadership goes beyond the individual. It goes beyond individual skills and abilities and also includes uh, a collective element. Our, our work has also shown that, the, um, uh, that women and people from the global south are underrepresented in the humanitarian sector when it comes to leadership. And so taking all of this into account, I'm going to distill all <laughs> uh, two years' work into one definition, <coughs> which, is, which is the following. Leadership is about providing a clear vision and objectives for the humanitarian response, building a consensus that brings all aid workers together around that vision and finding ways of collectively realising the vision for the benefit of the affected population, often in very hostile and challenging environments. And so this definition, um, if you like, um, it emphasises some of the uh, commonly found definitional ele elements. So the identifi it identification of a desired end state that's very different from the current state, the creation of a plan to reach this end state and the creation of support for the plan. Uh, you could say arguably a more managerial uh, responsibility for implementing the plan. So that's, that's the definition. And I want to talk very, very briefly about three <coughs> models which we have found in the humanitarian sector um, around leadership. And the first is a model of the in exceptional individual which relies on the skills and the abilities of one person. And the underlying assumption here is that the individual uses her or his or her skills to form plans and then uses their powers of influence and negotiation to uh, inspire others to implement these plans. I haven't got much longer. No, you're oh, going okay. nearly against the red line. Oh, goodness me. Okay, that's the first model. Second model is the structured model, which uses tried and tested procedures so that decision-making is spread and shared out broadly across the group or the organisation. And this re relies on high levels of delegation and uh, aims to re replace <coughs> the time and energy that's required in the individual model um, and uh, uh, through the procedures that are created by the organisation. And the third and final model is the shared leadership approach, which relies on sharing the, the decision-making load with other members of the team. And the principle here is that uh, a group can handle the workload better than an individual. And uh, this makes for more rounded decision making. And so in a nutshell, the last two years, three years of our NAP works, basic message is this. Good operational leadership is about collective approaches. It's about good systems and good management. And we have found that there may be too much emphasis on the first model I spoke about, which is the individual leader model. Well done. Thank you very much.